Back on Tide Talk, presented by RWJ Barnabas Health, proud to be the official health care system of Princeton Athletics. Joined now by Princeton men's hockey head coach Ron Fogarty, who just wrapped up his sixth season in Princeton. Uh, Ron, first off, how are you and your family navigating the situation? How are you guys doing? Hey, Cody. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, probably the same as uh, everyone else, just uh, trying to stay connected with uh, with people. We have the, the physical distancing set in place out here in Michigan, but you know, having your cell phone and uh, computer around uh, helps to uh, stay connected with the guys, uh, people that you, uh, you know, are in touch with every day uh, when you are working. And, um, you know, just uh, hopefully, hopefully this goes as quick as, uh, as it feels that the six years have gone by at Princeton. I want to go back to a few weeks ago, that last time your team was able to take the ice. You swept a playoff series, a couple of overtime wins over the six-seeded Dartmouth Big Green up in Hanover. Talk about that series and how important that series was just to gain some momentum, kind of an up-and-down season with a young team, but really playing your best hockey at the end of the season. Yeah, it's important. Anytime you have a chance to win a playoff series, um, you know, it's a great reference point moving forward. Uh, you know, through the, the balance of the season, uh, you know, we were playing well. The record does not uh, reflect how I felt we were playing. And we, we had nine overtime games uh, heading into that uh, series against Dartmouth. And, you know, the first game, uh, we were down uh, three separate times by a goal. And we were very resilient and came back and stuck with the game plan and um, got the game to go to overtime and won that on the road, uh, which was a big momentum uh, for the first game of the series. And then we got out to the quick start in uh, game two, uh, got up by uh, three, and, and the Dartmouth came back with a big surge in the third period uh, to tie the game up late. And, you know, going overtime at, uh, you know, losing a game uh, in the last couple of seconds where you could have moved on, uh, you know, we drew upon another reference point from overtime that we had against uh, Clarkson in the ECAC championship game where we just reset and get back to uh, the task at hand and uh, the game plan. And uh, fortunate enough, we had a power play in, uh, in overtime and uh, got the win. But uh, it was 11 overtime games a season. That's a lot. Uh, and uh, the guys did a great job of sticking with the game plan throughout the year. And I'm very glad and happy for our players to uh, be rewarded with uh, a playoff series win. Walk us through how you navigated with your team the few days following that. You guys sweep the series at Dartmouth and then a few days later find out that, I mean, eventually all sports were canceled, but find out that the ECAC playoffs weren't going to continue. How did you navigate that stressful couple of days with your team? Yeah, Cody, obviously, I just mentioned reference points. You have nothing to uh, draw upon experience of what occurred, but you know, as a coaching staff and athletic department, we are brought into the Jadwin gym and President Ice Gruber came uh, and uh, spoke with us. And uh, and it, it, uh, it was a great message by him and how much he supports uh, the athletic department uh, at Princeton. And um, we had the opportunity to continue our season because we, we were uh, vying for a bid in the national tournament. Uh, then we learned on Wednesday uh, morning that Harvard was uh, withdrawing from the tournament so our opponent uh, switched from Cornell to Clarkson and uh, the tape that we're using to uh, prepare was a, a Cornell Clarkson matchup so we just pivoted uh, utilizing the same tape uh, we went through tape that uh, evening ahead of our practice uh, on Wednesday uh, only to learn that uh, Yale was uh, withdrawing for the tournament and we would be going to Quinnipiac uh, so Thursday we just um, we're planning to uh, go to Quinnipiac and then we kind of pump the brakes as well as a staff. And, um, you know, just because the, the climate and what we're hearing from other professional sports teams, basketball, uh, you know, canceled their season uh, on the Wednesday evening. Uh, and then, you know, it, it was unfortunate uh, for the players at the time, but it was obviously we see now as a ne uh, necessary step to cancel the tournament. Uh, and our guys were were upset and because they wanted the opportunity to keep going. And uh, that was, uh, you know, the moment in the day uh, where they wanted and believe we can keep going and uh, keep playing. But uh, it was definitely unique, but uh, obviously the uh, the best thing to do for the time. Let's shift away from hockey and talk about Ron Fogarty, the parent. You and your wife have two of your three kids at home and then your middle daughter, Rachel. 
pretty close to the COVID-19 front lines. What's it like being Ron Fogarty, the parent, during this time? Uh, it's uh, good in a sense from speaking to a couple of my, uh, my buddies where they have uh, young ones being homeschooled and home taught. Uh, where I have uh, Jordan here right now. He's busy doing his thesis and online classes. Uh, Emma, she's uh, finishing up her uh, freshman year from Adrian College online as well. So they're busy uh, in, in a different room or upstairs in the bedroom doing uh, their classes. Uh, and then the one uh, with Rachel, we're just uh, giving her a lot of support. Uh, she's in her third week in a new profession. She's a trauma ICU nurse in uh, Toledo at Primatica Hospital. Uh, she's not dealing with uh, COVID cases uh, right now as we speak, um, but uh, you know, so a little unique and uh, supporting all three in uh, different ways. What's it like being back at home with Jordan? Obviously a lot of coaches trying to stay connected with the guys on their team. Not that tough when you have one of your own in the house. Yeah, it's different because we've shifted now. Um, you know, from four years of living room and locker room. And um, as I said, he's busy doing uh, his thesis or classes, but in the spare time, uh, we've been playing some pool, uh, fishing, and I'm definitely beating him in pool. Uh, fishing, uh, we haven't caught anything yet. And uh, he's kicked my butt in jeopardy every night at seven o'clock uh, on TV. Um, so it's good to have him here, but as well, it's unfortunate uh, because similar to the other seniors at Princeton, you know, he, he's missing out on the unique traditions uh, that occur during their senior year, you know, and the opportunity to walk through the gates at Princeton following commencement. So I wish he still had that opportunity back at Princeton. Uh, it's nice to have him here, but uh, I know he said the same thing. He, he wished he was back with his uh, fellow classmates at Princeton, uh, enjoying uh, their time as a senior. Time for the show and tell portion of our show. This is the comfort of your own home presented by Conway Comfort Heating and Cooling. And I know you have a souvenir from that two-game sweep final time your team took the ice this year up at Dartmouth. Yeah, I guess my trophy in the house would be my, uh, uh, I guess you can see it there, the Firesides Inn and Suites mug. Uh, it's uh, the hotel we stay at when we go uh, up to Dartmouth. So I have my uh, hot chocolate every morning in this cup just to keep me in uh, and start me off the day in a positive mood. And uh, not much show and tell uh, around here these days. The other show and tell probably my fridge and my TV, but uh, the coffee cup starts the, uh, the day off the right foot. Ron, good catching up with you. Stay healthy, stay safe, and good talking to you. All right, Cody, thanks a lot. Appreciate the time. Ron Fogarty, Princeton men's hockey head coach.